Ooh, today, another, another day, another dollar, eh? These are my work boots, as you can see, big boys. What have we got? ARB dual air compressor. Fantastic. Okay, so today we're gonna to be putting in my air compressor. So my existing one is underneath there. You can see it's got my locker solenoids and the actual hose attachment. So I basically wanna retain those. You have to actually buy a separate manifold piece for those. Uh, it's called like a locker activation kit or something um, that's specific for the twin compressor ARBs. So you're gonna need that as well if you're gonna intend on running lockers out of your twin compressor uh, ARB compressor. So keep that in mind. I didn't realize you actually needed to until uh, I came to install and I went, holy shit, I don't have it. So that is that. But for now, um, because it's underneath my seat and I think that's a good spot for it, I'm going to reinstall the twin compressor underneath my seat. So first I'm going to take my seat out. I'm missing my 17 mil socket because I lent it to a mate and he's lost it and he's lost my uh, half inch uh, ratchet so now I'm going to do it all with a spanner so good times alright now that i got the seat out what I want to be doing is basically these cables uh, what we want to keep again we want to keep these black ones this this one and this one I should also pull this out basically so that I can get to all the cabling shit that's actually hiding underneath here alright so as you can see I've fully opened all this up to get this out this is my power cable for my existing uh compressor lead basically i'm going to disconnect all this which leads up to my lockers and my actual compressor switch which is that this guy wires into your parkers and ignition pretty sure the ignition is this red one and the parkers are the blue or um, dash, dash light, whatever you want to call it. So that's basically the setup. You've got to run a power cable and you've got to run your uh, dash lights basically in. So that's pretty much disconnected my entire uh, air locker assembly already. So as you can see up here is just for your switches, down here is for my power and my ignition and my dash light. Everything else is literally just the locker assembly that should be pretty well plug and play. So let's just disconnect this. I'm gonna pull out these bolts so the whole compressor basically comes up and out and then we can look at getting, switching these locker solenoids over to my new one and then switching over my um, hose. So disconnected him, disconnected him, which were plugged into those guys. Um, and so now basically I am just going to work on getting these locker solenoids out. So that looks like a 12 mil 12 mil maybe, two 12 mils, and then I'll take these out and then basically I can pull out my hose attachment. Still pressurized. Pull him out, pull this guy out. It goes like that, it goes like that. Now pull this guy out. Comes out, another 12 mil. Second lock of solenoid comes out. That's the whole compressor. All right, so here's this big mess. This is your little air locker manifold kit. It's just a little tiny air cylinder, I suppose. <clears throat> what you get in it is this braided line. You got an end cap that basically is gonna screw into that. And you get some mounting holes to obviously screw this guy down. All right, so with the actual ARB compressor, they give you a full scale template on actually how to mount it because what they've done from previous models is they've now put riv nuts in all of these. So basically you can screw up underneath which means these are gonna be redundant, which is kind of annoying because I've riv, uh, riv nutted all those in. So I'm gonna to have to silicon them up now, but 
I can basically see that my air compressor is going to sit kind of neatly just in there like that. So um, as you can see, I marked it. Basically, I think that's a pretty nice stable spot for it. I'll be able to fit those uh, the dust covers in wherever they've gone. Here we go. Dust cover number one, if that screws in nice the whole way through there, it should sit in nicely in there too. All right, so you literally just pull those out with your fingers. We've got the actual dust covers, dust spoos, whatever you want to call them. They just screw in by hand, just like that. So now, let's see if this fits in. Oh, there's my template. So yeah, it's going to sit just like that. Because my next problem is I'm going to have to install this somewhere. So, she might have to be sitting like this, or sitting on the side, or sitting underneath the, I don't know, somewhere. So what I've done is mark that mark there. I mark a little edge there, and I mark a little edge here. Just so that I kind of know where the air compressor is actually sitting. I'll move him up to there. You get this. I just folded the, the paper so I can basically see my markings. So that's going to be my corner there. That's going to be my corner there. And so now I know the exact points of where my air setter, air, air compressor needs to be sitting. All right, so as you can see, I basically just got a sharp Phillips, push straight through into the vinyl, bang, 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 bang. Pick it up. You can now see the spots in the vinyl. I might just mark these with a permo because why not? So now I can actually see where I'm gonna be drilling. So for these old spots, I'm just gonna get some silicon and silicon up these holes. So no water and shit gets through if I'm going through crossings. And then I'll get my drill out and drill these. Now, I uh, suppose I should mention, it's always important to check what's beneath before you start drilling anything. So as you can see, if I would have started drilling, my fucking cross member, my chassis rail would be right, oh there's a nice rock, hello. Um, my chassis would be in the way. So, there's no point in drilling on this side because I'm not going to be able to get the bolts in. So, if I get these four screws in on this side, get them nice, I'm pretty happy that that'll be adequate to hold it in. Okay, got my drill. I'm going to use a 7mm uh, drill bit for this. So I'm going to mount it with these four holes just here that I've marked. That's my four holes. With the compressor sitting on the top, I'm going to do, I'm just going to take my silicon gun, jump underneath again. They all line up pretty nicely. I think this one needs to come back just a little bit. That's all right. So I got an assortment of more bolts than I've needed. That one's not gonna fit. Just gonna make sure that they all fit in first. I think I've pushed them a little bit too far. That's a bit better. Yeah, that's gonna line up nice, that'll go in. Got another long bolt for this side. That's going to go in nicely there. Oh, she'll fit, baby. She will fit. Yeah, so now that I've just tested to make sure that they're all going to line up properly and I can basically unscrew them all by hand, so that means it's gonna be a good fit. Now I'm just gonna go through my silicon gun, bog these old holes, and now what I wanna do is basically, I'm just gonna get the gun again, and just shove them straight into all the holes. So these front long two bolts, Gotta find the hole first. I think so. The second long one is this guy, find the hole. Beautiful, 
all this excess silicon, so just chat. Ugh, dark. All right, let's get all this shit out. So, that is the compressor. Look at that. That is rock solid. That's gonna move the car. So, very happy with that. My idea for this little guy is I'm just gonna mount it straight into here. Just tech screw it straight in. Uh, only reason is because that is hollow. It's also a good mounting spot because this guy can actually come up and uh, reach in. Something like that. And then my locker solenoids can basically just come straight out there. But anyway, let's get these locker solenoids in so that we can basically see exact mounting positions and I can start playing around with this bad boy. Alright, so I've got some gas rated Teflon tape here, which is the yellow yellow type of stuff. Conveniently was in my garage. Oh, I'm gonna have to fucking what size is that? A 14? I bet you don't even have a 14 here. Oh I do. Pretty good guess. So everything that's gonna be basically pressure fitting, so anything that's in terms of gas, you're gonna to have to uh, put some Teflon tape around. So that's just in, that's just to stop any air leaks basically. So I don't know what the bloody rule is. I'm sure there's a rule of how many times you're supposed to go around, but I go around three times. And I've already lost count how many times I've gone around, but that's okay. Let's screw this bad boy in. Wow, it's already pretty tight. Where's my 14 gone? I've lost my 14, there's my 14. So let's tighten this guy up. Now let's grab some of this. Let's Teflon tape him up. I've got no idea if I'm doing this right either. So if you want to critique me on my plumbing skills, please do. Alright, so this has actually worked out really well because this is hollow. I basically uh, just put all my uh, Teflon tape through here. Actually put this on the right way. I've got this T-piece. So the actual guy sits in there, which is actually better. So that goes in for my compressor. I'm actually just tech screwing the bracket straight on like that and it's going to sit nice. It's really nice that this thing actually comes up and you can adjust it so basically i'm gonna just tech screw another bolt straight in there which will hold this guy in and like that so now he's sitting there nicely i can chuck him like that and this guy also moves so I can actually just screw it off like this. Get my get my blocker lines. All right, so that is my full air locker assembled. So these are my obviously my lines that were coming in. These are my old air lockers, solenoid engages. So bang bang. Thanks for coming. Basically, just going to use the wiring harness here that they give you. Um, I've obviously got to plug them into that and then this wire straight in that'll clip straight back in this guy clips in down there and then I can run my new power feed which I'll plug into that most of this I'll actually coil up straight under here because what I'm gonna do is this power cable here I'm just gonna uh, I'm just going to use the red for one of them so I'm going to earth, earth this, say, I don't know, to there or to here or to somewhere. And then as well, I'm just going to use one core to power this side. And I'm going to use this core to power that side. And I'm just going to take off my old, uh, my old joiner off my other compressor. And I'm literally just going to use that. Oh yeah. So basically what I'm going to do is... What, you, what you're going to have to do regardless is you're going to have to run an extension cable. So what I've got here is basically the old cable that the guy has run for his old compressor. And it's obviously got a twin in it. It's got a black and a red. Copper's copper, mate. It doesn't matter as long as you know that this black one, you're going to power up 
on the other side to a positive terminal. So if peace of mind, if you wanna make that red, get a bit of red tape, wrap it around it, by all means do it. So what I'm gonna do with that is that with my two actives, oh, sorry, my two positives here, sorry, I'm a house sparky as well. Uh, with my two positives here, I'm just gonna cut them basically, say around this length, and on the other side where this comes out, which I'll show you, So this is that cable here that comes out from my compressor. One side goes into here, which is the fuse source, and the other one follows through here and connects up to the battery. Now, contrary to popular belief, you don't actually need to put this, put the negative to the battery. And the reason for that is that you have your earth, which is your car. You basically, I've got this, which is gonna be for my, for my switch. And it's important to know that when you actually wire this up, is that you've got, this is the same for, I've left the cabling, it's gonna be the same regardless. So what you're gonna have is obviously you want your yellow to go to yellow, green to go to green, black to go to black, and purple go to the red. So it's gonna be in a configuration like this. So when you plug it in, it's gonna look this way. So make sure when you do it, you have that purple one in the bottom corner here. So I might just do it while I'm actually just in this spot. So I got my purple there. Got my yellow on the top. I think this is the right way. Oh. I've been facing upwards. Yellow on top. Black in the bottom corner. And green in the top right. So that is gonna basically let my lockers and my air compressor switch on properly. So that's just gonna click in, bang. I'm gonna keep all this shitty excess cabling hiding underneath here. I'm gonna bring my two locker lines out, which are basically gonna connect into my solenoids. So that's my rear line. So I'm gonna want my green one to connect into that solenoid. And this is my front line. So I'm gonna want my yellow solenoid to connect into that. So that's gonna connect like that. That's gonna connect like that. This purple one will connect straight in like this down to here, clip straight in. And then this big boy is basically gonna connect that, which I explained before. And with my earthing, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna earth it to that bolt. All right, so that is, again, everything plumbed up. I'm just tidying up this cable tie with the, uh, I'm just tidying these up with some cable ties leading into there. That's what I was talking about with doing the connections. So I've just reused my old wires. I've got my two positives just joining in with that i've disconnected this over on the battery end clean that up a little bit with some conduit um and then the rest of all this cabling i'll just tidy up and we'll, we can just leave under the actual uh, center console so i've earthed it straight to my handbrake cable just there that's fine i've tested that so i get 12 volts going to it so that's going to be a sweet place to earth everything it also means I don't have to actually stuff around with trying to get stuff through the firewall. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is basically, I have my twin ARB fuses. I'm planning on leaving this guy out anyway because I wanna do a dual battery system over to there. So I have a, a dual battery actually inside the, the cab. So I'm gonna disconnect this guy. I'm gonna solder on this to that and then basically run it straight to this terminal block here which has got a two gauge cable basically running from the battery this cable will be fine to handle that i really should have this fused um coming off the battery block but i'm just too lazy but anyway and that guys is a completed installation of the arb dual compressor so there's my two fuses going onto my block that runs back i've got the negative actually earthed inside so that's fine inside looks something like that so yeah all that conjured all that nicely through there that's not going anywhere that's not going anywhere thanks for coming let's see if it works all right let's see if it works oh. fucking oh wow that is sick what i'm gonna do is that it's pressurized and I'm going to go look for leaks. 
can't hear anything, so to me, that says she'll be right. In my expert opinion of she'll be rightness, probably say that she'll be right. So that's it guys. There's your installation of the ARB dual compressor. Thanks for watching.